half. Yep. <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> if you ever ask me that again, I think while I'm driving you somewhere, I might punch you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are very close. Where are we very close to, Mark? Home. Home. Home all. The city front. <laughs> it's been 18 days. If I spend another nine hours inhaling Kaya's breath, I might punch myself out of the car. <laughs> I know, man. Poor Kaya, she's like, guys. Why you gotta be, don't me? shame me, you're embarrassing me. So shall we talk about the last 18 days? Let's talk about the trip. Well, what was your favorite view, like, either than You? The <laughs> 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 um, I think at the end of the day, I just love, like, the place that we stopped was Lake Louise. That's probably one of my favorite views. I love that. But yeah. generally driving through the Rockies. Yeah, yeah and like seeing, the Icefields Parkway. Yeah, right. that and just generally just going into BC and just driving through all the mountains on a very good day with good clouds. Um, yeah, that's one of my best views. I mean, Vancouver Island was, was beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much everywhere. And let's not forget our favorite place to eat. Like, if you're watching this right now, peeps. Wild Mountain. Wild Mountain. Yeah. And that was in Sook. Yeah, definitely. You I know, we're going to top suck. places. I will say that is, and I hate to say eating at a restaurant, but that is probably my top memory. Yeah. The, yeah. Everything about that experience was great. From yeah. The, the taste of the food, the presentation, the ambiance, yeah. the service, the people there. It even Kaya, she was just kind of quiet. Kaya was mellow. She even obviously felt like calm. There. I also really enjoyed driving through northern Ontario too, with um, with all the different the what is it called the shoals or whatever, the Red Rock area and everything like that. Oh, that yeah, was that's really, really beautiful nice. as well too. What I didn't um, like is driving through just endless pastures of brown and farmland. Yeah, Manitoba and Saskatchewan definitely led. Um, left us with a lot to desire <laughs> from a view perspective there would be blips of like really cool views like the view at dinosaur park like that was really awesome when you got into like that badlands area and stuff but those were like minute little times it was mostly just pastures yeah. maybe and that's why really they call boring. it saskatchewan they're like what can we name this place that nobody will want to remember or care about saskatchewan of course this <laughs> I wonder what the, I can obviously, that's an indigenous word. I wonder what the indigenous word means. It probably means something like Great Plains or something. It probably means like, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair though, like the two parks we went into to uh, stay at Saskatchewan were actually quite gorgeous. And yeah. foresty and stuff. They weren't in the like prairie area, but oh, I mean, aside from that. Whew. Prince Albert was great and it yeah. had the nicest, I think, shower. <laughs> Guys, I shaved today, I showered, I cleaned my junk. It was just because of the showers. It was literally the showers. Like, I would go back to Prince Albert just for to take a shower. <laughs> That's pretty all, much it. Drive all the way to Prince Albert just to shower. That's yep. it. This, this goes right back to our scales and how much they change <laughs> over time. And that, like, one day when we were in BAM, like, you know when you wait to the last minute to do a school project? Yeah, that's what it like, felt like. just get everything done at once, oh my god. Yeah, but we were yeah. so lucky because it was we scheduled did. to schedule. It was forecasted to rain. Yeah. And then we got up in the morning and it was nice weather, sun came out, and we got to do every, well, apart from the waterfalls. But everything yeah. that we wanted to do, we got to do that day. So that yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, we were, I think in general, we were quite lucky. fortunate on this trip. But um, even the times that we did experience some rain on our trip, it wasn't horrible. I think last night, which is probably why we all just were like done with it and just found an Airbnb quickly to stay at last night. Um, because last night was supposed to be like torrential rain all afternoon and evening into the morning. So it would have been our last night of the trip, miserably wet, soaked, packing up wet, soaked stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it was totally worth it. And yeah. even with the haunted doll Annabelle oh in the house. We just came across something really freaky. We've made it to our last place, our Airbnb in Elk Lake. 
And y'all need to check this out for yourself. But look what is in this cupboard. Oh. I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. It's like Sister we all Irma. slept. Well, minus Kaya waking you guys up at three o'clock in the morning, but for the most part, I felt very like calm yeah. and relaxed. In yeah. That place. I won't lie and say I was done with camping. <laughs> Let's talk about camping. My first camping experience. Like I think I I I I like camping. Yes, I can say that. But I wouldn't want to do it the way that we have done. It's too much. Um, yeah, the bridge is down and yeah. packing up every day is rough. Yeah, I for I, sure went through that. I again. wouldn't mind going into a park on a weekend, a long weekend, set up camp and just hang out there and just do that instead of a cottage weekend. And yeah, I'd be perfectly fine with that. But the setting up, tearing down, driving nine hours, setting up, tearing down. Yeah, you still have to work for your food. <laughs> <laughs> it was too tiring for me. So, yeah. but it was still a great experience. I learned so much on this trip. Um, I would probably be able to survive the wild until the wolves eat me and the bears tear me apart. Guys, it's a freaking bear. And the whimpering squirrels throw chestnuts at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely enjoyed the experience. I think the not being able to shower for several days was probably one of my biggest things. It was so like, cold most of the trip, so it's not like we could have gone for a swim either. No. This one got to swim a lot, but we just kind of got there, set up camp. Yeah. If we're lucky, we made a fire. Um, but if I, if I drove that day, by the time we get to camp, I'm exhausted. Wiped I out. didn't particularly like freezing in the tent. It's just not a very nice experience. Like we're in our sleeping bag and it's generally quite warm when you're in it, but you can't move. The moment you shift just a little bit to a portion of the sleeping bag that hasn't been touching your skin, it's like freezing cold on your skin and you immediately wake up. Yeah, for Each sure. morning when I would get up out of the sleeping bag, I felt like I was going from like a cocoon into being a caterpillar. Like <laughs> I, I felt like I was being reborn in the morning. And, I was like, <laughs> and then it was cold and then I was like, okay, no, going back in. Yeah, I know. I would say I was very happy with the equipment we did bring for us. Oh um, yeah, for sure. The tent was really, I mean, quick to set up, quick to take down. Um, um, Kaya, lay down. It was very easy. It definitely, it is a four season tent. I can tell that for sure. Like it was, I know it says it is, but um, I was very happy with the quality of it. And the sleeping bag and the pad. If we didn't buy the mat and the pads, I don't think I would have been able to sleep because the one night that I kept sliding off of it was miserable. Would we do another 18 day road trip with a camp? I wouldn't do it where it's continuously driving every day because we yeah. literally drove every single other day. Yeah. Because even the days that we had like what we call rest days, we were still driving, driving from places. wherever we stayed to somewhere to experience it. We weren't actually just not in a car. So yeah. we were in a car every day and that's been, that's exhausting. I feel like Mr. Burns in the back seat. Yeah. I'm like this, the, the mayor. Seat, like, hello, Smithers. <laughs> Did you guys feel that you, you really got a chance to disconnect from the real world? Where I was like, we have no service and I'm actually okay with this because now, I have this like OCD thing where when somebody messages me, I feel this like obligation yeah. that I need to respond and I need to communicate and I yeah. need to, you know what I mean? When I was in the mountains or like even in Golden, Golden, we're on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. We have this like beautiful private pond and yeah. um, the fire and like even, what was it, two nights ago when we had the beautiful starlight yeah. and really have reception and I was like, you know what? I'm okay with this. I don't want to stare at my phone. I would rather just stare up at the starlight. I, uh, I had to edit the video, so I had a lot of stuff that I needed to do online. But I felt perfectly fine not responding to people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did too. But that's because, I mean, to be honest, that's the type of person I am anyway. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> We tried to focus a lot of that, though, during the drive because we were sitting yeah. in the car anyway. Well, are we ready to go back to real life? No. No. <laughs> you said it to me last night, didn't you, Kim? Where you said, I Maybe. feel like I needed just one more day yeah. to at least rest after all of the traveling adventure and yeah. Yeah. this and that. And my arse hurts, so. Oh yeah, the numb butt thing is for sure a real, a real factor, so. And it's not like a good kind of ass hurt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me? What do you have to say about it? How, how, how's the trip been for you? <laughs> She's miserable.
comfortable, clearly. What's the one thing that you think you will talk to people about on the trip? Um, definitely Annabelle, of course. Um, but the other thing that would, would probably be the story I told in one of our earlier videos that, uh, you know, I wish that I had explored Canada. So regardless of what country you're from, explore the place that you call home. Yeah. Um, enjoy yeah. the culture, go and visit different cities, and what that city is kind of based off of or built on. That's, yeah. that's kind of my encouragement to everyone is don't just try to leave, try to explore as much as you can as of the place that you call home, essentially. I think often we take things for granted because I'm from the States originally. I've traveled to areas in the States, but with very specific purposes. I don't recall a single time that I went and traveled around the States with the intention of just exploring them. For me to get the chance to do it in what I call my second home now in Canada is... It definitely opens your eyes to things a little bit differently. I think the one thing I'll keep telling people about is that I still haven't seen a moose. <laughs> I would just tell people to experience things in, in lengths of time that you can manage. <laughs> you start small, start slow. I think we were extremely ambitious. Right, what is yeah. the one site you want to sh tell people about though? The one that I never thought of, and I, I don't even know if I, I personally have ever heard of, was the Dinosaur Prevention Park. Yeah. I had never thought to go there, it never registered, it was never a bucket list thing. Yeah. When I thought of Badlands, like I think in the name itself, I was like, no, 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 don't like... <laughs> yeah. I'm already foreshadowing what's going to happen to yeah. me. Uh, but after being there, like I was so blown away by that yeah. view and um, even just climbing up the hill, the hikes there, yeah. the fact that it's like one of the biggest uh, UNESCO sites um, in the world and that you can find so many different uh, dinosaur fossils and like that to me was super cool. I was not expecting that. I have uh, some must-do tips for people that are going to go camping. Number one, you must have proper hiking shoes that are waterproof. Yes. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter what you're doing, shoes are very important. Number two, a raincoat because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. And layers. Layers yes. are key. Always dress for all weather, especially if you're camping in Canada, you just never know how the temperature is going to drop. Oh, and a headnet. <laughs> Doesn't matter how stupid you look, yeah. but a head net, oh my gosh, it will change your life. One of those little like tennis racket, badminton, <laughs> like zappy things that kills the bugs as well. Yeah, always find out whether you're gonna get firewood at the campsite because you wanna buy it before. Almost every single park said, hey, you can get firewood here. Uh, don't buy it and bring it into the park. It was five or six of the ones we went to. Either they closed early and you have no way of getting firewood outside of it, or they like legit didn't have any at your campsite even available to you. Revelstoke, I think, did it the best because Revelstoke in the Snow Forest, uh, for, like the provincial park area there, yeah. they had the wood waiting for us yeah. on arrival. And I don't know if that was a fluke <laughs> or intentional. I think when people made reservations, I think they brought it to the campsites for people. Last words? Yeah, last words. Stay safe and stay sexy. Don't get murdered. <laughs> don't get murdered. <laughs> don't get eaten by bears. Yes. Uh, Follow the rules of campsites. Like legit. Make it where everybody can enjoy it. Wildlife is a real thing. Follow us on TikTok. Wait, what? <laughs> that was random. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. Till our next adventure. Sayonara. Cut, cut. Cut, cut. We have arrived. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> On to our house. Wait, On... wait, wait. What? I forgot something. I got you guys a gift. What is it? Good night, you beautiful bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.